ลสองชัดชัดไม่สองวอน
misteri.
May we all stand and let us pray for the prayer for the 2022 elections. Let us pray that the forthcoming national and local elections may truly reflect the will of the Lord who guides the destinies of the nation. For every petition, let us pray together. Deliver us, Lord. Deliver us, Lord. For coercion, intimidation, violence, and terrorism. For Deliver us, Lord. For dishonesty, lies, and all distortion of truth. Deliver us, Lord. From bribery, graft, and all conspiracy for fraud. Deliver us, Lord. From gullibility to the deceptive and blindness of perspective. Deliver us, Lord. From threats, intimidation, and perverse language. Deliver us, Lord. That the conscience may always be our ultimate norm. Deliver us, Lord. Hear us, Lord. That the common good may always be our highest goal. Hear, Hear us, Lord. Lord. That human dignity may be respected all the time. Hear, Hear us, Lord. That the poor and the weak may always have the priority. Hear, Hear us, Lord. That care for creation may never be ignored. Hear, Hear us, Lord. That solidarity may guide the path of peace and development. Hear us, Lord. That children in fear of God and love of neighbors may guide those who seek public office. Hear us, Lord. Let us pray. Shepherd, Shepherd of, of souls, souls and Savior of the nations, politics is your gift to us, a call to serve others and grow in holiness. Guide our politics as you guide our lives. May our political engagement for voters and candidates Bring glory to your loving name and help us grow in holiness forever and ever. Amen. Good morning and benedicti, everyone. As we progress in our Lenten pilgrimage toward the glory of Easter, today's readings remind us that it is not easy to live as authentic disciples of Christ. Trusting in the Lord's grace, we will not be afraid, for our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. As devotees of the Sacred Heart, we know that we are called to share in his sufferings and offer our troubles and crosses in atonement of our own sins and the sins of all other human beings. In this holy mass, we pray for peace in Ukraine, for clean and honest local and national May 9 elections, for a successful senior high school Paasco survey preparation, for the intentions of the birthday celebrators for the month of April. For God's healing upon those who are sick from among our friends, relatives, family members, and benefactors, and for the end of the pandemic. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, let us all rise and welcome our mass presider, Father Vin Sabal, SDB.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Gathered together as one community, thanking the Lord for this new month. We also look back for the many graces and blessings that he has bestowed upon each one of us. And we also look forward for this month that the Lord may continue to accompany us and that we'll also be ready to follow his will despite difficulties. Let us ask for that grace in this Eucharist. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. <laughs> May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who have prepared fitting helps for us in our weakness, grant, we pray, that we may receive their healing effects with joy and reflect them in a holy way of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Our reading from the Book of Wisdom. The wicked said among themselves, thinking not aright, let us beset the just one, because he is obnoxious to us. He sets himself against our doings, reproaches us for transgressions of the law, and charges us with the violations of our failing. He professes to have knowledge of God, and styles himself a child of the Lord. To us, he is the censure of our thoughts, merely to see him as a hardship for us, because his life is not like that of others, and different are, here, um, are his ways. He judges us debased. He holds aloof from our paths, 
as from things impure. He calls blessed the destiny of the just and boasts that God is his father. Let us see whether his words be true. Let us find out what will happen to him. For if the just one be the son of God, he will defend him and deliver him from hand of his foes. With refoulement and torture, let us put him to the test that we may have proof of his gentleness and try his patience. Let us condemn him to a shameful death. For according to his own words, God will take care of him. These were their thoughts, but they erred, for their wickedness blinded them. And they knew not the hidden counsels of God, neither did they count on a recompense of holiness, nor discern the innocent soul's reward. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus moved about within Galilee. He did not wish to travel in Judea because the Jews were trying to kill him. But the Jewish feast of tabernacles was near. But when his brothers had gone up to the feast, he himself also went up, not openly, but as it were in, a secret, in secret. Some of the inhabitants of Jerusalem said, Is he not the one they are trying to kill? And look, he is speaking openly, and they say nothing to him. Could the authorities have realized that he is the Christ? But we know where he is from. When the Christ comes, no one will know where he is from. So Jesus cried out in the temple area as he was teaching and said, You know me and also know where I am from. Yet I did not come on my own, but the one who sent me, whom you do not know, is true. I know him because I am from him and he sent me. So they tried to arrest him. But no one laid a hand upon him, because his hour had not yet come. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, good morning. Have you felt, even once in your life, being threatened by somebody because you have done something right, just, and good? Or have you ever asked yourself, why do good people suffer? Don't worry, you are not alone. People since time immemorial have asked the same question too. And if we have answered yes to these questions, then we too can relate with the one we are following as Christians, our Lord Jesus himself. On this Friday of Lent, we sense the impending suffering and death of Jesus in our readings, we realize that the hour of glory of our Lord Jesus is coming, but not quite yet. Jesus is preaching and has challenged those who have been listening to him, and some of them sought ways to destroy him. And in the first reading from the Book of Wisdom, it speaks of wicked individuals plotting against the just one because they are threatened by what the just one teaches. The just one is a son of God and the wicked realizes their own evil and rather than change in response to the teaching of the just one, they decide to get rid of the just one. And our responsorial psalm today reminds us that God is near to those who call upon his name, and that God will redeem the lives of those who seek to do his will in spite of opposition from the wicked. Thus we sang earlier, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted. Brokenhearted not because of a failed relationship between lovers, but brokenhearted because of those who do not accept us, especially if we do Good things. Nowadays, it is not very easy to say and do what is right, good, and true. There is the rapid spread of fake news and misinformation. People prefer to listen only to those that are favorable to them, to the point of wanting to appropriate these according to their whims and caprices. It is indeed not very easy to identify which information is truthful, since there are lots of voices and sources that seem to drown the real, the factual, the truth. That's why it takes discernment, reflection, and prayer in order to sift through this information and arrive at what is the truth. That is why we are invited to approach the truth himself, our Lord Jesus, in prayer before making any life-changing decision. 
And in our gospel today, people were asking about Jesus as the one that the authorities wanted to apprehend and try to kill because of saying and doing what is right and good. And what gave Jesus the courage to continue his mission despite many oppositions? We have a hint of this in his words when he said, You know me and also know where I am from. Yet I did not come on my own, but the one who sent me, whom you do not know, is true. I know him because I am from him and he sent me. Our Lord Jesus knew who sent him and what his mission was. It was clear for Jesus that he did not hesitate to live it and even ready to die for it. The people saw Jesus' persistence and perseverance in standing up for what is good and true. Brothers and sisters, we may ask ourselves the question posed at the beginning of this homily, why do good people suffer? Good and truthful people suffer because they uphold these values in the midst of many oppositions that satisfy the proud and greedy. Tomorrow we shall celebrate the feast of San Pedro Calungsod, our second Filipino saint, a saint from the Visayas. And if you know his story, he was a companion of a Jesuit priest in the Marianas to preach the good news. He was a catechist, a young catechist. And while they were baptizing the people, there was one time that you know, somebody died while after they baptized the child. And one of those people there saw an opportunity. They said that the water that they used for baptism was poisonous. That's why nagang namatay after lagibunyagan. See? Pedro Calungsud was somehow, and Father Diego Luis de San Vitores, the Jesuit priest, were victims of fake news. <laughs> no? What happened? So the, the, one time, he was, they were going to baptize the child of the chief. But then what happened? The chief said no, hearing those fake news that he had received. But then Pedro Calungsod and the priest together, no, they went to the house of the the chief in his absence and baptized their child. And when the chief knew what happened, that they planned to kill the priest together with his companion, Pedro Calungso. So one day, they went, and while they were teaching the children, no, Pedro Calungso and the priest, they attacked and killed both of them. Their bodies were thrown in the sea. Tomorrow, we shall have that feast celebrating his martyrdom, his, the offering of his life even to the end for the gospel to be proclaimed. And as we commemorate today the most sacred heart of our Lord Jesus, we look at his wounded heart. This heart of Jesus as well continues to love, continues to proclaim and live the truth and good is our model and example. As followers of the Lord, as Christians, let us not be afraid to be good, to do good, and to let the good reign in our world today. Let us start this in our families and communities. Let us allow the love of the sacred heart of Jesus to penetrate in our relationships at home, in our dealings with one another at work, in our life of entertainment and recreation, in every aspect of our life. As Christians, let other people affirm us, not because of our beauty or fame, but because they see Jesus in us. Nakita nila ang ginuo diha kanat. And as we celebrate this Eucharist, let us ask for the strength from the Lord to help us persevere in being and living good, honest, and truthful life today and always. Amen.
as we have meditated on the ill treatment of the just, let us ask the Lord for the grace to persevere in doing good for ourselves and on all those who are put to the test on account of their allegiance to Christ. Let our response be, Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the Catholic Church and all those who believe in Christ, may they hold on to the hold on and live by the gospel values in a world steeped in corruption, materialism, and hedonism. Let us pray. Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear us. For the Holy Father, our Bishop, and all other spiritual leaders, may they persevere in their mission of strengthening the faith of the flock entrusted to their care. Let us pray. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. For all parents, teachers, and catechists, may they rise, the new generations in the proper appreciation of the sound traditions of the Catholic faith and inspire them with their example. Let us pray. Lord, graciously hear us. For our children and young people, may they treasure their Catholic faith and mold their lives according to its principles. Let us pray. Lord, graciously hear us. For our birthday celebrators for the month of April, and all of us gathered in this Eucharistic celebration, may we persevere in our commitment to the Lord in spite of the bad example of many in our society. Let us pray. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. Let us pray in silence for our personal intentions and all the intentions we offer in this Mass. Let us pray. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. Lord God, source of our strength and consolation, may all we plan be according to your will. May all we do be for your greater glory. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the grace and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May this sacrifice, Almighty God, cleanse us by its mighty power and lead us to approach its source 
with ever greater purity through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you will that our self-denial should give you thanks. Humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim. Therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that, converted at last to you, you might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Archbishop, Midifilis Auxiliary, and all the bishops and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters, and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so we pray.
deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be And an act of spiritual communion. My oh, Jesus, Jesus, I believe, I believe that, that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into, into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there. And unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that as we pass from old to new, so with former ways left behind, we may be renewed in holiness of mind. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Act of consecration to the sacred heart of Jesus. Lord Jesus, Redeemer Lord, of the human, human race, race, we, your we faithful, faithful people, people, turn to your most sacred heart, heart with humility and trust, and, trust, and a and desire to give you glory, honor, and praise. And praise. We, we thank, thank you for all that you are and all that you do for us and those who work to lead us in the ways of justice, freedom, and peace. Gathered here in your name, we consecrate ourselves to your most sacred heart, in which dwells the fullness of love and mercy. Lord Jesus Christ, King and Prince of Peace, reign in our homes, in our communities, and throughout our land. By the power of your cross and resurrection, help us to build a civilization of love in our communities. Give us leaders, men and women of vision and courage, who can give new hope to our nation. May all we do give honor and glory to you, and to the Father and the Holy Spirit, living and reigning forever and ever. Amen. We invite those who are celebrating their birthdays for this month of April. Please move forward for the blessing. I invite the community to also extend your hand in prayer for them. God of all creation, we offer you grateful praise for the gift of life. Hear the prayers for all birthday celebrators, your servants, who recalls this month the day of their birth and rejoices in your gifts of life and love, family and friends. Bless them with your presence and surround them with your love that they may enjoy many happy years, all of them pleasing to you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. thank everyone for your participation in this Holy Mass. We continue to pray for one another. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass has been offered. Go in the peace and love of Christ. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
take your seat. Let us now spend a minute of silence as we reflect upon the recently concluded Mass. On behalf of the Scholastican family, I would like, like to thank Father Vince Sabal, SDB, for presiding over our first Friday Mass. Let's give Father Vince a round of applause. Also, let us express our heartful thanks to the following people for making this Mass possible. Campus Ministry Coordinator, Sister Mechthild Huntado OSP. Mass Readers, Mrs. Bacchus and Ms. Ruby. Mass Server, Mr. Payusan. Mass Offerers, Ms. Oxtero and Ms. Rakaza, the Faith Mass Choir, Mr. Fernandez, Mr. Sarte, Mrs. Kendara, and Ms. Mabulay, the Technical Committee, Mr. Torion and Mr. Baklaan, and to all of us for your presence and participation, but particularly our students joining us via Facebook Live. Let's give ourselves a round of applause. Reminders. Module distribution for this month will be this coming Saturday. So that would be tomorrow, April 2, 2022. The monthly summative assessment schedule will be on April 21 to 22, 2022. And lastly, the school invites a community to join us today at, at 11 a.m. for the Station of the Cross. The event will be streamed live on the school's Facebook page. That would be all that in all things... God may be glorified.